I would say, I mean, sex is, it still remains really taboo today, as I'm sure you know. And I think that's really unfortunate. I don't think there's any reason why it should be so stigmatized. So for me, I just happened to come across sex research when I was still in school. And I didn't know such a thing existed, but I thought it was so fascinating. And I thought it was also interesting to see people's reactions when I would tell them about the research I was doing, because I found that it would usually fall into one of two camps. People would either get really excited and say, oh my, oh my goodness, that's so, that's so cool. Tell me more about it. Or they would get really put off and uncomfortable. And I do write about this in The End of Gender. And so part of my decision to continue on in sex research is because, well, number one, it, it was so fascinating to me and it still remains that way. And I still keep on top of the newest studies as they come out. I stay close with many of my colleagues and friends in the field. Um, but it's also, I just felt we should be able to talk about this in a very open way, just as we would talk about anything else. And I, I often give the example, if I were studying something else, like say birds, there would be no shame in that. I'd be able to talk about that all day long. So that would probably be the, the core reason, I think. But it also for me, I mean, in my personal life, I'm very, I consider myself to be an open-minded person. Mm -hmm. That's very important to me. And it's also very important that the people in my life are like that as well. So when you study sex or when you write about sex research for a living, as I do now, it's a really good filter in terms of you can tell right away certain things about somebody the minute they find out what you do. And if people want to judge me based on that and avoid me and not get to know me because of that, I, I actually like that because it tells me also that this is probably someone who's we're not going to have the same sort of approach in life. I don't think you necessarily have to agree, agree with somebody mm -hmm. uh, in terms of your opinions, but I think just that openness to be willing to talk about things and understand people and, and to not judge someone just because they may be pursuing a line of work that you might not understand. That's, that's important to me. I couldn't agree more. There was a really long time where I would get a lot of anxiety when it came to introducing myself to somebody and the you know, line of questioning is almost standard for everyone. It's like, well, what do you do? And I hate lying. Like it's one of my like one of like my core values is like truth. So like even when it comes down to like a stranger and like a, you know, superficial meeting, maybe I'll never meet this person again. Like I hate lying about what I do because I feel like when I do that, it's saying like I'm shameful of certain decisions. So I kind of just like leaned into it and I had, I have a similar mindset as you do, which is like, it's a great filtration process. And I've had to revisit this with like having a kid recently. And it's like, well, what, what do I do when other parents of his friends, maybe like you can't play with him anymore because his mom is X, Y, Z. And I'm like, wow, that's going to be terrible. But it's also a great way of just rooting out people that maybe don't have that curiosity or that open mindset um, or that are accepting, they're going to be very critical people. So I don't want them in my, in my close circle anyways. So it's a really good and healthy way, I think, to like reframe it. Um, yeah. where That's do you, totally oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say that resonates with me too, because I, I feel if I, because I, I have seen this with other people I know in the field, and there are actually papers documenting this where sex research will, researchers will say they feel shameful about what they do and they don't want to tell people what they do because people judge them. And I, I don't feel right. It's as though I'm saying that there is something wrong with what I do if I feel I have to hide that. And a lot of people will say, I'm sure you get this too, will tell you that they, they love what you do and they actually might have considered doing what you do as well. But because of the societal stigma and shame, they didn't. And I think that's really a shame as well. So where do you think that comes from or I guess is lingering from? Especially because you're, you're like this professional researcher. You're looking at it from much, a much more sanitized way, if you will, versus like what I do. Like I, I get people having an issue with what I do, but with, on your end, I'm like... What do you, what's wrong with that? You know, we should be researching this thing. It's a biological need, really. So we shouldn't leave it unattended. So where's that coming from? I think it's comfortable for people to just not question the the ideas that they have. I mean, for you, I find it really hypocritical that people would judge someone like you because I would say the vast majority of people enjoy looking at <laughs> porn. So you know, why are we why are we punishing people who who do that line of work? Um, I think it's like anything. It's just it's it's uncomfortable to question your your values in some cases, and mm. um, because there there aren't many people out there saying the things that you and I say. I think that's part of it too.